Hello there, welcome to section A of I Love, I Love You, Porgy. I'm going to simply show you the chords, how I dissected it, and uh, the, how the melody is actually very easy to pick up. And um, in another video, part two, I will show you section B. So as always, like, comment, subscriptions are welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, Patreon podcasts, and a new playlist. So I was listening to this piece. I knew the melody a bit in my mind, but it certainly wasn't on my internal jukebox. So I was listening to a lot of versions with the lyrics, Ella Fitzgerald, Billy Holiday, and then I found some piano versions, and I heard Oscar Peterson, uh, Keith Jarrett, um, Bill Evans, and a couple of others. And the, there's two things that that forced me to want to tell you. Number one, do not fret over the melody. It's different in every single recording, whether it's piano or even saxophone. I heard some other instrumental versions and singing. They all sing differently. Uh, Nina Simone, they all sing differently. And the second thing is about the chords. Uh, the chords on jazzstudy.us, jazzstudies.us, has his own set of chords. I think I kind of follow those ones. But again, like Oscar Peterson, he doesn't, he doesn't do, in two versions, this 2-5-1 onto the uh, B flat, onto that sort of second chord. Uh, many of them don't also play the chord after the B flat, which on jazz studies says slash A with a D minor. So, you know, don't be too strict about the chords or the melody. After all, this is jazz and you can kind of do what you want. So I'm going to give you the basic skeleton and it's down to you to do with it. Uh, what you wish, find your own chords, extensions, play the melody kind of how you want. I like to put a little bit of blues in it sometimes. It's kind of my thing, but do what you want to do. So this is just going to give you the general idea. How I dissected it was uh, a lot of listening. I got it on my internal jukebox. I could hear a lot of the progressions. It's not too hard. Then I looked at the Jazz Studies lead sheet and thought, okay, that's kind of 70, 80% how I would have done it. But I just got some little ideas from there. And it came out like this. Once I got the dissection done, uh, I was walking around with a cup of tea and, you know, playing with the cats and drilling that numerical chord sequence in my mind. So I could play it in any key, which maybe I'll do in this video. It doesn't matter. It's not about being able to. It's about wanting you to be able to do this just by knowing the chord progression numerically. And that came out as this. One, if you want a two five onto the four. I'll, I'll go into this in a bit more detail, writing out how I would do it perhaps. And, uh, and then a uh, two, five, one back to the root. Uh, no, 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 sorry, I got distracted there. It goes uh, one, two, five, one onto the four. No, then a two, five, one to the root. Yes, yeah, sorry, that's correct. And then after the root, you're playing the three, and then you're going to six, <laughs> and you're going to two, but with a major third, and then two with a minor third, and then five, and then one. So you might want to write that down. So I'll just go through that for you now. That is basically what happens. And you can enhance the chords as you wish. I can give you a few ideas on what I did. The melody, before I do that, is simply based 90% on an F major seven chord with the odd extra note. It is basically F major 7. So in any key, even in A flat, you just play the major 7. The first note is that, top, the 9 is the top note there. You just play, play the major scale of that, of that key. It's quite easy, the melody. Uh, and the chords are like this, so let me just confirm. So it's 1. If you want, you can do the 2 5 1, but I won't. I'll just skip that for the time being. So 1. Hear the melody. Four, major seven. I like to drop the major seven to a six. Bom 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 two five one. Ba -da -da -bom. And then you go to your three. And then you go to your six. Playing a nine there. Talk about the chords later. And then a two with the major third. And then you drop that to the minor. Five, and back to one and then you can stay on there and then start again or you can do a nice little two five turn around so that's the idea that's basically how it goes so let me just do that with a slightly more enhanced chords 
Uh, but just let me just remind you actually of the chord progression. So it's one, two, five, one onto the four. This is a floating two, five, one. And the way to notate that is to put in brackets F four. So you know it's a floating to the four. And then you write two, five, one. But that means that you know that that's a two, five, one of the four. The four is B flat and you're doing B flats, two, five, one, just temporarily. So one, Uh, I'll do the two five one this time, and that's it. so the chord one is only two Bs. One. And then it's straight into that two five one for one B each. Onto the B flat, so four. And then I like to go to a six. And then a two five one G minor seven. In the left hand I'm playing C in the bass with an E, so it's a tenth. It just sounds nice. Now that's a nice uh, call I did, what was it? Uh, I did uh, oh yes, this one, I played C augmented nine, or C nine augmented. Nice voicing. The ninth voicing is a three dominant seven nine, uh, flat seven, with the sharp five. And that sounds nice, as a, as a five one chord. So then you're on an F for two, or master key one for two, or even three, and then uh, you go to your three chord, when I said three I meant beat three, kind of one, two, three, and then just do the three chord, the A7 on beat four, or you do it, do it two, two, like two on F, two on A, your choice. So uh, the melody at that point is it's going up the F major chord again on that A7, but the chord I would play is this, dominant seven, three, and a flat 13 or a sharp five, label it as you want, I'd call this a A bracket flat 13, not A flat 13, that's, that's, that's different, A 13, A flat 13, A flat 13, or A augmented, A dominant seven augmented, you know, it's your choice. That sounds nice, because that's like a five one chord onto D, but we'll call it the three, six, two, I like to play a 13 here, even with a nine, it sounds nice. 13, seven, three, six, put the nine in it. It's all numbers from the major scale. So it's very, very simple in that way. Then you go to your minor. You could just do that because the melody note is an E. It's a minor 13, which is my least favorite chord. And it's in this song, which is hard to play, but I have to do it. I, I really don't like that sound, but anyway. Uh, and that's it. That, so that is literally all you have to do. Um, part two, I'll do. I'll deal with it in another video. But to go into part two, which starts on A minor sixth, uh, you have to do a two five one onto that. So that's B half diminished, minor seven flat five, A uh, E seven of some kind. I like to flatten the five on those kind of chords. On five one, it's nice to flatten the five when you're landing on a minor. So that's, that, that's the third of F, the master key. So that's very easy to remember. So you do the whole sequence twice, and then when you end, you're gonna go two, five, onto the three. A minor six. Um, I haven't dissected these chords in detail yet, maybe I'll change it in part two, but from what I remember, it was a sixth chord. A minor sixth. So I'll just confirm it again for you, and uh, sort of highlight how I might play it, give you some stylistic ideas, and then I can close the video. So I think my, my opening chord was an augmented chord. C, augmented. One of, the, one of the stylistic elements is to play the melody and then the chords afterwards. It's a nice thing to do. It'll drop down chromatically. Play the chord here. Now I could play this chord delayed, F major nine, with the nine on the bottom. Now I could just go straight into these into the two five one onto B flat, and then let the melody come after. So uh, it's C minor nine. I'm playing one five seven in the left, nine, and then the minor five dominant seven nine. On the F, you could play like an F and an A in the left hand. So root tenth which is the third and then play maybe this chord which looks like a C diminished but I'm in the key of F so it isn't a C diminished 
It's an F with a dominant 7 and a flat 9. Here's the 3, here's the 5. Nice chord, nice sound, if you listen to that. And then go on to the B flat. Bring in the melody after. I like to play the 6, and I'm also adding the 9. Because that just sounds right for me. See, it kind of settles. It has a nice settling feeling. That Oscar Peterson does a kind of like double, doubling up on the melody note. That's where we have to play that uh, minor 13 chord. And I think also I did a tenth, but I did it as a minor. Uh, nice, you can do a little chromatic, not chromatic, but like a scalic run, like that. Down to the C, to the five. Here I'm playing, uh, it looks like E diminished, but it isn't. It's C7 with a flat nine. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald's version, she ends on the A here. See, I did listen. Sounds nice. Oscar Peterson goes like that. So there's a difference each time. If you were to listen to my recording, if I did one, it would be like that. Something like that. So if you learn the lyrics, I kind of got the lyrics 80% in my mind, so I kind of know how many notes should be in the melody. But it's nice to modify it a bit, embellish it. If you listen to Keith Jarrett, you couldn't put a melody on that. It's far too many notes and chords. I'm not saying that's bad, I'm just saying there's a, there's a freedom in it. Um, so let me just do it again and see what happens. Notice my open octaves. Notice my rolling chord. My minor tenth. Now, in that time, I played the chord, melody note on top, and I rolled into the melody and let the melody finish. This chord, A dominant seven. So it's, well, the actual chord is 13 flat nine. But it's a dominant seven, flat nine, third, 13. And then it, because the melody note is an F, it's nice to sort of fall onto that on top. Like that. Uh, how does it go there? No, it stays on D minor, sorry. Here's another D to F, another minor tenth. chord again looks like major 7 but it's not we're in the key of D so it's minor 9 uh, so I think I went to a minor 6 just for a bit of variation here's G13 but I like this hesitation that's a really nice change because it shouldn't be a major third, it should be a minor. It should be that, it should be because it's a chord two and the D is a minor, it's six as well. So it should be like that, but it isn't, it's, and that's nice, then minor. So two as a major third and then two as a minor third. Uh, so, that, so when I do the melody, I like to hesitate as if I were singing, which I am very much not a singer, I would like make it roll around like that, so. That's nice. Sorry, uh, notice also how I bounced the chord for rhythmic reasons. Touched on the nine for a bit of melodic interest. Just a chromatic walking up the notes of interest of the next chord. Onto the E7 flat five, and then it's going to go onto the, the A minor six, and then we'll, we'll worry about that in part two. So there you go, hopefully that's helped you. This was a request, so thank you for that. I hope it's helped. Everything I've done in here you can, of course, apply to any repertoire in jazz. I just listen to it a lot. 
got the lyrics down pretty much, listened to various versions of it, singing and instrumental, played the uh, song over in my mind until I really knew it. Uh, then when I got to dissecting the chords, I dissected them into easy sections. So I got like, you know, one, and then a two, five, one into the four, and then a two, five, one back to the root, and then a three, and then a six, and then a two as a major, and then two as a minor. It's kind of the same thing. And then a five, and then a one. So it's very easy when you think about it in these sections instead of individual chords. And then, of course, I played around with the melody. And somehow it came out like that. And it will obviously come out differently every time. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. As always, likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my books, my Patreon podcast, new playlists. And I will see you in the next video, uh, part two in this case. All the best and bye for now.